Welcome, welcome folks. Jeff, welcome, uh, thank you for that music, that intro music. Welcome folks to Fantasy Golf TV with Jeff Deal. I'm your host. Uh, got a great show. Uh, sidekick again, Brian, thank you for being here again. Absolutely. The guru uh, himself, and I, I always say that, but uh, we truly are this week, we can say it. We can brag this week. We can. We, uh, we did very well. We were both down on a list in our league in Fantasy Golf, uh, the TGD TV League and, uh, through Yahoo, and uh, we came out of the doldrums, and uh, we got uh, first and second place, both of us, so it's a long season for the week. So That's why I didn't get down when I sucked it up on the first week. Yeah. Now, we're not in first place yet or second place yet. I am in second You're in place, second. But, but uh, we moved up. Um, I went from 27th to 11th. Yeah, that's great stuff. So, uh that's good. You moved a lot. I did, too. I was in 16th. I'm now in second place. Only a few out. And, um, I'll catch you next week. Week three is uh, here in a PJ Tour uh, in Fantasy Golf T- yep. uh, Fantasy Golf as well. And, um, we got a good show. we got some information. It's a really hard um, handicapping field uh, for this upcoming event just because it's it's played on three courses. It's There's pro-ams involved. Uh, there's actually a 54-hole pro-am. So that's really hard to deal with when you're a PGA Tour player trying to win a tournament and you're dealing with a bunch of amateurs. We've talked about that in the past. But yeah. in terms of handicapping for your team, who are you going to put on your team, you have to look at all that. And, uh, so it, it's a tough one this week. Yeah, it is. That's why uh, this is one of those weeks that uh, you could be well-served going with um, guys that have been there before. Veterans, guys that are used to playing in the 54-hole Pro-Am. I mean, there's they use three courses and it still takes – Six hours to play around because yeah. playing this tough course with amateurs and, and you know high handicap. Yeah, and you look at a player's mindset. Yeah, you know, you know who some, can handle something like that. There are guys that don't play this event because they don't want to deal right. with all that. Right, guys yeah. like uh, Patrick Reed who can be tend to be a little bit of a hothead sometimes. I don't know if he bodes well for uh, although he's a past champion as a U.S. or it'll be depend on his partner. Right, but they've never played this rotation of golf courses. It's all new, yeah. except for the TPC Stadium course. Right. So they always play the stadium course. Right, but they're all uh, they're different courses. So I think there's going to be a lot of feeling out this week. I think it's going to be a really tough week for everybody who's in fantasy golf and and uh, and, uh, and trying to pick some teams this week. Obviously, uh, when you're researching, um, you look at the venue, you look at uh, past champions and all that. Um, but I, I think overall it, it's going to be a tough week, and I'm struggling with it. I've, I, you know me, I always put my team in, but uh, this week uh, it's up in the air who I'm going to put in there. So. And, yeah, I, like I said, I think one of the, if you're looking for a safe bet, this week might be going with guys that have been there before, even though the course no, are different, just based on the whole, all the other, um, all the other. I have distractions. I have a unique strategy. You want to hear my strategy? I do. I do. Uh, so uh, the folks do. I know that. It's a very unique strategy, and I just employed it. Okay. On the A list. Just, wait, wait, wait. You just employed it. I just employed okay. it. <laughs> I, on the A list. Okay. I just took the first two guys on the list for that one. Then I went to the B list, put the first four guys in. <laughs> okay. At the C list, I put the first two in on that one. Well, there you go. Those I'm, are I'm, golf. I'm done, man. I got 138 <laughs> points last week, folks. <laughs> I love it. Um, and I went down in the rank. <laughs> but it's a strategy, okay? I mean, you know, it might pay off sometime. You no, know, the funny thing is, though, the golfer performance list, in, in our league, there's uh, some tabs on, on the website that you can uh, click on golfer performance, and, um, as well as the golfer distribution. And distribution is percentages of how many people are putting these guys on their teams. Uh, the performance list is uh, what they've done in the past for the past tournament, uh, how many points they've gathered over the past week's event. So, um, obviously, uh, in looking at it, in the C list from last week, uh, Fabian Gomez, who won, got 78 points. Um, Hence, uh, I had uh, high honors this week, so I had him on my team. Uh, We had mentioned him in last week's uh, show, Uh, too. uh, uh, Yes. Um, Obviously, in passing, because not a whole lot of people. I'm going to have to go back and listen to last week's show. I don't think you guys mentioned it. Go ahead and listen. I think you kept that. Go ahead and listen. (laughs) Because I would have put Fabian and Gomez on my team, but you guys mentioned him. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Well, he played well the week before, and I think we both had mentioned that. You weren't even listening. (laughs) I I think I was. I'm pretty sure you (laughs) were. I think you guys are sandbagging. You're, you're, you're throwing us all some. So well, actually, last week we actually gave out our complete team. Yes. Normally, I never asked that. Gomez was not either one of your. Yes, teams. he was. He was. He was on his team. I, I think you guys added him after the show. Nope. Well, I know I did. I'll, I'll admit to that. <laughs> <laughs> 
on my team, but I did mention him on the show because he played well the week before he did. at, uh, at uh, Wiley. So I, yeah. I thought it was uh, uh, not at Wiley. Uh, it's Kabalu. Uh, Kabalu. So I, I really thought that he, he should be considered anyway. And right. you had said that he, you, you had mentioned that he's going on your team. So yeah. And I listened to the guru. I mean, this guy's smarter than I am. So it's my show, but yes, you, sh- you should be doing it. <laughs> no, this is all you. Bro. This is all you. So, um, you know, when you're when you're talking about this week, you're talking about. It's funny you bring up Patrick Reed is, you know, a wild card. You know, for uh, for a favorite. But well, attitude wise, with this type of yeah, but you and you said as he won before, he didn't win two on. Uh, he won in fourteen. Right. And he holds the tournament record. Actually. He does. He does. Again, different venues, though. Right. You know. Right. I, here's the thing about, and I, 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 th- I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be putting Patrick Reed on my team a lot early on, um, but knowing his game, he plays very well on easy golf courses. And he lights it up. But when it comes to a Pete Dye course, which is the uh, the one where they're going to finish on, uh, I just don't like him. So don't play on Sunday. Well, yeah, that's the thing, and that's you know you look at that with the type of venue again. Yeah. They're playing for you know all these courses uh, leading up to, but then that last round will be played on that on that Pete Dye course. And I, I, I to me his pass doesn't show very strong on that type of shot maker's course, and even though he's one of the best strikers on tour. Well, and PGATour.com, um, uh, they've got him. Rob Bolton, who I follow and tweet with and, and, and go back and forth, he um, he actually has Patrick Reed as number one. He does. Well, let me see. I got. Uh, let me just double check. It's, uh, He's on my team. Yeah. I, my top five picks. He is now. And, and, and again, on my list, he's number two. I've got actually Matt Kuchar. I thought uh, he started off poorly last week, but he came around. He finished tied for thirteenth. I like him in this venue because he is a shot maker on any different golf course. So I like him and his demeanor when he's playing in six hour rounds with a bunch of amateurs is a little bit more. He's, he's got that mentality to right. handle. So he's my number one pick this year uh, or this week. Not a bad pick. Uh, and, you, and you'd be remiss if you didn't give serious consideration even though it's different courses to Bill Haas. He's the all time leading money winner in this event. He's, he's, he's the defending champ. Yes, it's different venues, but they've changed. Yeah, I, I still think he's got to be. He's got to be. Well, he has. To, he has. He has defensed before in this venue. He's won it. He's defended the title where he was tied for second. Yep. So I don't think that's an issue that he's. He's not worried about defending. He's. Um, he's this week's. You're nuts if you don't put him on your team pick. Right. Totally agree. Totally agree. Not not saying that he's my lock. I think he's going to win. But you're t- I mean, you're talking about earning fantasy points, and it's and you got to put him on your team. Yep. Uh, let's see. I guess so. That's uh, I've already gone through top five on my list. These are my top five picks: uh, Matt Kuchar, Patrick Reed, and and, um, and uh, Bill Haas. Uh, we talked about it last week. Zach Johnson with his change in clubs. He's kind of a kind of a question mark right now. Um, Played pretty well. Yeah, but he was missing fairways. He doesn't miss fairways. He couldn't get that driver down. So you think he's working on that to fix it this week? Is this the proper venue again with all that he's got to deal with this week? With with he's a veteran guy, though. Yeah, and I know, but you know, and that's the thing. I think he's the type of guy that maybe some amateurs could be more more, more, more laid back and relaxed playing in this. So he's number four in my top five. I like Zach Johnson, uh, and um, and then one guy we mentioned last week who always plays well in, in Hawaii in the West Coast is Charles Howell. Charles Howell to me yes. is a uh, he's going to be on my team this week. He is one of my top. Five. Uh, Charlie so, Hoffman is another guy that historically plays well at this one. That's not a household name that people, a lot of people would overlook this week. But um, again, you're, you're talking about um, looking for points. Yeah, and um, he, he won this. 2007, and he finished second last year. Um, by the way, uh, let's keep the trend going of a young guy that has played well the week before that you should carry over to this week in the field. Uh, if you were looking, maybe a little bit of a stretch, maybe not even a little bit of a stretch. Uh, and he's in the B group, so you get four guys in that in that pick, so you can. Uh, Zach Blair. Yeah, he's solid, isn't he? He looks like he should be playing on the – Middle school team, though, by the way. <laughs> he really does. I mean, is he, he looks younger than a 14-year-old kid that played in the Masters a couple of years ago. He really ago. does. He's got, like, you know, some yeah. stubble. He did, just, like, was that stubble? Did, or did, or did, <laughs> was that stubble or did, like, some grass in the wind blow get some grass stuck on his 
I mean, he can't be shaven. He's the cutest kid. He, he's, he's, and he's solid, man. He's got a little hitch in his swing. And I, I it's kind of breaking his swing down. I DVR'd and, and, and kind of kept going back. Something bothered me about that swing. And uh, for me to get him on the practice tee, I think I can maybe fix a little thing. But I think he'd look at you and say, oh, yeah, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who are you? You're a pro in Myrtle Beach. You're what? <laughs> Marty, what's that? Uh, so, yeah, you know, but uh, that's one that if you're looking to, because, again, we're early in the season, and I can't stress it enough when you're this early in the year. It's so easy that Patrick Reed, Zach Johnson, Matt Kuchar, Bill Hawks, every week, the, the, the guys that are, that are playing, and the next thing you know, you're going to get to mid-season, you're like, oh, my God, I don't have three times to pick this guy. Well, if you bring up our league in, a, in our A-list, there's not many people to choose from, and it's a tough choice. A-list is tough. It's really tough, and um, um, I've got two guys in there right now that I'm scratching my head at, but uh, there's one guy down at the bottom of the list that I'm, I'm contemplating, and that is, uh, and don't laugh. I didn't even but laugh. The feared, uh, feared lefty, uh, Phil Mickelson. I yes, think he's... Uh, that's not funny. Well, so, you know, he hasn't won in two years. And, um, but I, he's going to get your points in fantasy. It's not always that one. And, um, so I, and you're right. And that's, uh, I, so I, I'm, he's not on my team yet. I'm leaning towards uh, Phil. Uh, just in this A-list, it's a tough one. Right now I have John Senton and Tony Fanu uh, as, my, uh, as my A players. Right now I have Brendan Dijon, Dijon okay. and, and Tony Fanu. Um, I also had at one point clicked on. Russell Henley took it off. I also, at another point, had looked at John Sennon as well. And I also gave a glancing look at Phil Mickelson. So it's, um, it's, it's a, it, it, it's a, and sorry, folks, I'm not giving you anybody for list day right now. I'm just not sure. I need to well, do a little bit more research. Well, list day, we both said Tony. We did. So, I mean, and he's right now. I mean, I always pick my team. That, might be, our, that might be our A. And I like John Sandin. I, I think he's about to turn the corner. Um, the only thing I don't like about John Sandin, any any tall players, when you're a very very tall player, you tend to get very loose at the time in in, in a round when you can't afford to get loose. You need to really tighten up a little bit and point your play. So that's our excuse. I'm not tall. I just stink. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm saying. We're not tall. You can get you can get a little loose, and, and I it just um, I worry about that. And he's a uh, he's a very tall, lanky player. So um, that's uh, that's John said that he. But uh, but I like him in this venue, and, and uh, I, I think I'm, right now he's on my team. The curveball. I'm going to throw a little um, curveball out at you, and I had mentioned him last week briefly. Um, uh, is um, Steve Wheatcroft is uh, is on my team right now. Uh, he's down the list on a lot of people's radar, but um, I, I really like how he's finished uh, uh, leading up to this event. And um, I, I just uh, I think he's he's uh, he's pretty strong. He didn't finish too strong last week. He was a five, only five under, but uh, I, I think uh, he's about to turn the corner as well. There's that curveball again. I'm, I'm looking. I ran out of some of my top players. Last year, and I don't want to do that. So, wow. uh, there's one of my sleepers right there. That's just it. When you're this early in the year, and you're in a wa- what could be a wide open field, uh, it's it's not a bad idea to take some flyers. But you just got to realize it could really bite you in the rear end. But then again, how bad? How far did you fall off at the end of the year last year? When you yeah, yeah, I was in first or second place, and then I finished. I finished s- seventh. Yeah, I mean, you, you which in the last three weeks, out of the money, you went because. I was ran out of writing picks. checks for everybody you except ran out, myself. I ran out of picks. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, and that's the, that's the fun thing about, you know, limited picks, fantasies. you got to really think about it. Uh, other guys, i got other um, worthy people uh, to, to consider. Uh, Daniel Summer Hayes is right now playing very well. Uh, really like him. Um, and um, Graham Dillette, who uh, finished strong last week. He, uh, I think he was a Tied for 13. I don't think I will ever pick him again. Why, why not? Every time I have picked him the last two years, he has failed miserably. Well, the last two years. And I don't think I will ever pick him again. Okay. <laughs> so here, let me ask you this. I'm looking at the uh, uh, top, what do I got here? The top 20 uh, the PGA Tour earners so far. Uh, FedEx Cup standings. 
Okay. Actually, I got the top 40 fan picks, too. You know, uh, Kevin Kisner, we all know, is uh, number one. He's been leading for a while. Uh, Russell Knox is number two right now. Yeah. We haven't even mentioned him in three well, weeks. Well, he won in the fall. He won in the wraparound. So, so we haven't even mentioned him in three weeks. It's impossible. He's played seven events. He's made five cuts. He's got two top tens, including a win, but we haven't even mentioned him. Uh, Justin Thomas. Yeah, he was... He was on my team the first week. He's got two top tens and a win. And, and he missed the cut, so I haven't put him on a team since. Smiley Kaufman has, uh, he's made the cut in every, he's played in six events. He's made the cut in all six events. He's got two top tens and a win. And the coolest name on tour. And you love Smiley. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get, uh, we'll get winners last, uh, last fall. Uh, yeah. Why they're up Guys winning in the fall. They're not playing as well as kids. Of, of the, uh, of the top, um, ten players, uh, all the wins Fall except for uh, Speed and Gomez. Right. Gomez is fifth on the earnings uh, with his win this week. Uh, he's five events, five cuts made, two top tens and a win. Um, so I'd also know him, uh, Fabio Gomez. Him and uh, um, uh, uh, Emilio uh, Grillo, Grillo. Both are going to make the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 Olympics. the Olympic team. And, uh, that's awesome. How about, how about let's go to the, uh, the ninth place person on the Cubs and earnings. On the FedEx Cup? Jordan Speed. Jordan Speed. Three events, three Cubs made, three top tens. With a win. And he's only ninth. <laughs> he's not well, going to play three events. <laughs> <laughs> how about, how about play, how about tee it up three times and earn one point three million dollars? He's playing, he's playing Pebble this year, right? He's playing, yes. And there's a lot of guys that are over in Oban, uh, at Dubai this week. Right. That are coming they over come to play Pebble next time. Well, that's a lot of travel. You got uh, Rory and, and, and Jordan and Ricky and I think DJ. I'm looking forward to next week's picks. Next week's um, theme, uh, will be a star study. Because it'll be, yeah. yeah and be, it's it's a blast. I mean, it's just yeah. a party time. It's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, we do the hoodie tournament here and it's kind of a little mini pro am from what they do in Pebble Beach. But it's still to have all those celebrities and all those PG Tour oh, yeah. players in one spot. It's just so much fun. They all love each other. They they respect each other. What they do in their own business. And, um, it's a lot of fun to yeah. watch that on TV. Yeah. I miss the old days when um, you know when um, some of the old timers used to come walking down the fairways. And, uh, Jack Lemons and, and uh, you know those. I'm, I'm yeah. showing my age there, but uh, uh, so uh, give me a. Uh, Give me a clear shot out of the people, uh, which I just brought up, and boy, there's a lot of them. But um, obviously, Patrick Reed, uh, I'm, I'm, I am. I'm going. He's going to go on the team. Um, I'm going to. I'm not going to start him that first. I want to see how he comes out of the gate with that pro am atmosphere. Um, you said that about him at Capitol, by the way. I did. Did you end up on my team? Uh, I did. I did. In fact, um, and he went out. I didn't start him at all. And he went out to any kind of tour up first. Uh, another guy I'm going to put on my team, I already have on my team right now, Graham Dillette. Yes, on you said that. Yep. Uh, and then there's another sleeper I'm thinking about. Uh, I've got St- uh, Wheatcroft right now on my team. Uh-huh. And then nobody's talking about it right now, but I'm, I'm going to – right now he's on my team, Webb Simpson. Uh, I like how he came out of the blocks last week a little bit. Uh, a little slow, but then – Finish strong, so I, I think he's on a little bit of a roll, and I love his attitude in an event like this. He plays very well in this type of atmosphere, so I like that in him. Um, so that is that is my B list. Well, what about you? I've got uh, we talked about him earlier. I got uh, Charles Howell the third, um, Charlie Hoffman. That's going with two guys that historically played well mm-hmm. in this event, and I'm not going to use them a lot later. So it's not my burden. Right. Uh, I'm going to ride the hot. I'm going to try to see if I can pull it off two weeks in a row. I'll take a Zach Blair. Okay. As of right now. He's on a roll. He's, he's on a roll. Sure. You know. And then um, currently, I have Ryan Palmer. Uh, who finished strong again last week. finished strong last week. Not really uh, had done anything spectacular in this particular event. But, again, maybe maybe the way he finished will carry over. <laughs> Getting back to Zach Blair, I'm sitting here thinking um, – that's pro- it could be a pretty good pick, but here's a young kid who hasn't played many of these pro. I don't think I'm going to start. You know, I'm curious.
curious how he's going to react. There's fans that might think he's a ham. Yeah, that's true. But but even just playing with the amateurs who are yeah. movie stars or whatever, whoever they are. Um, yeah, well, let's hope he gets paired with, um, like, uh, industry tycoons and not, like, right. the, the rock, and roll, the, rock and roll uh, right. artists. Yeah, or, or, or movie stars where he's going to be starstruck. Instead, he's going to be like, he's gonna be, maybe he'll be playing with the uh, president of blah, blah, dot com. And, and it will, he won't care. You know, it's, a lot of these guys are good. I mean, I talked about, I, I mentioned Alice Cooper. He, uh, I played with him. He came uh, for the Hootie tournament once. Didn't play in any event, but he came to check it out, uh, trying to clear a schedule for the following year. And I went out and played with him, and he actually was beating me by two. As I said, two or three. He's a Andy solid Callaway. player. Yeah, he was on staff with Callaway at the time, and I was on staff with Callaway. So Callaway hooked us up together, and he was beating me by two. It was rained. It, it was rained for seven holes. He was beating me by two, and it's uh, thank God it really started to rain hard because we quit. Because <laughs> he was beating his Alice Cooper man. I mean tattoos everywhere, but boy, he can play, man. That's yeah. He's, and he's not young either. So you're going to be that old man. Um, okay, so that's uh, let's go to the B list real quick because we're running out of time here. Um, right now, I have got Smiley Koppel on my team. Um, and we got a list, uh, obviously, uh, on on um, on, a C, on our C list is, is Bill Haas. Uh, I've got Bill Haas. So I've got Bill Haas on it. Team. But Smiley Kaufman is that that one that you mentioned that I, I, I kind of like right now. I, I'm going to see how he he comes out of the blocks with this type of. Event. I've got Johnson Wagner because he has played well. This event. Good, good event, fast. Yeah, it's a good event. For they're him. a West Co- they're West Coast he's guys. Got, yeah, he's him and Palmer and those guys all play well yeah. on the West Coast. Uh, and again, my no way, shape, or form telling you to go to the to the Vegas window and put money on Palmer. I know Wagner. To win on any event, of our picks, this to win the event, it's a tough one. It's a uh, it's a uh, guy that should score. Yeah, that'll get you fantasy points. Hey, boss, you wait back there. I'm here, buddy. Who you got? All right, on my team, A team, I've got Brian Harmon and Tony Finau. Uh-huh. On the B team, I've got starting Patrick Reed and Zach Johnson. On the bench, I've got Ryan Palmer and Webb Simpson. And on my C team, Greg Owen and Matt Kuchar. I like the team. I didn't I, mention on a son of a pick. No, I, I really like that team. Nice job. We'll see how you want to. It took a lot of research to come up with that team, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to have to start testing your theory. We're going to have to start tracking your theory. <laughs> see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for being here again. No problem, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, Jeff, thanks for all you do behind the glass. Uh, folks, you can um, contact us. Remember, the social networking, we're doing a little heavy this year. Uh, Facebook.com backslash Fantasy Golf TV. Uh, our website, FantasyGolfTV.com. Twitter, at Fantasy Golf TV. Uh, you know, give us a call. Give us a, a, a tweet. Um, you know, contact us any way throughout there. Brian's always here at TTD, uh, TV Radio and um, TheGolfDirector.com. All of our us are on the staff page. So, um Check us out. Contact us if you have any questions or concerns uh, with your team. We'll be glad to help. That's why we're here. Uh, TGD Radio and TV are, brought, are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the golf director, be sure to check out our featured golf course pages where you'll find up-to-date information on course conditions, specials, and much more. Uh, need help with your next golf vacation? Hashtag just call Dave. Give us a call at 844-GO-GOLF-1. That's 844 844- Four six four six five three one. All of our TGD programming is archived for your listening and viewing on demand. To catch up on a show you may have missed, click on the TGD radio and TGD TV tabs in the menu at thegolfdirector.com. We're now available on over a billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, uh, Roku, uh, Blueberry, and the Myrtle Beach Golf app. Uh, uh, also Periscope and uh, Catch Me. Uh, so uh, I'm, my name is Jeff Deal. Uh, I am your host of uh, Fantasy Golf TV, and uh, appreciate Brian for being here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have uh, more uh, up-to-date news and information uh, coming up, so uh, stay tuned, folks. See you next week. <laughs>